Welcome students. This time I will discuss the physical and chemical structure of DNA. I will also throw some light on various conformational forms of DNA. The genetic information of all living organisms except the RNA viruses is stored in deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA. What then is the structure of DNA and what features of structure of DNA allow the transmission of genetic information from generation to generation. A DNA is a macromolecule consisting of repeating subunits called nucleotides. Nucleotides are composed of a pentose sugar, a weak base and at least one phosphoryl group. Such a structure without a phosphoryl group is called a nucleoside. Thus ATP and AMP are nucleotides, whereas the unphosphorylated form adenosine is a nucleoside. In nucleotides, pentose sugar is in the beta furanase form, that is in a closed 5 member ring. In DNA, the pentose sugar is 2 prime deoxy D ribose or simply deoxyribose, which is the reason for the name deoxyribose nucleic acid. The oxygen atom present at the second carbon of ribose is missing in deoxyribose. Hence, it is named 2 prime deoxyribose. The position of carbon atoms of pentose sugars are denoted as 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime and 5 prime. In order to differentiate them from the corresponding positions in DNA bases, which are not marked by a prime. As far as the bases are concerned, which are found in nucleic acids, they are heterocyclic compounds containing nitrogen in their rings, hence they are called nitrogenous bases. The bases found in nucleotides are substituted pyrimidines and purines. Unsubstituted pyrimidines and purines are not found in biological systems, but a number of substituted derivatives are present, which are classified as pyrimidines or purines, depending on the parent molecule from which they are derived. Pyrimidine bases consist of a six-membered pyrimidine ring, which is similar to the benzene ring, except that it contains nitrogen in the place of carbon at positions 1 and 3. Therefore, pyrimidines contain 4 carbons and 2 nitrogen atoms. DNA contain 2 major pyrimidines, cytosine and thymine. Dear students, it will be pertinent to mention that RNA contain uracil in place of thymine. Only rarely thymine occurs in RNA or uracil in DNA. In uracil, a keto group is present at the second and fourth carbon. So, it is 2,4-dioxopyrimidine. The only difference between uracil and thymine is the presence of a methyl group substituted at position 5. Thus, thymine can also be called as 5-methyluracil. In cytosine, a keto group is present at second carbon and amino group at fourth carbon. So, it is 2-oxo-4-amino pyrimidine. Purine is a bicyclic structure consisting of pyrimidine fusion to an five-membered imidazole ring. The five-member ring of purine has nitrogen in the place of carbon at positions 7 and 9. Therefore, purines contain five carbons and four nitrogen atoms. The two major purine bases present in DNA are adenine and guanine. In adenine, an amino group is present at position 6, while in guanine, an amino group is attached with the second carbon and a keto group is found at position 6. Therefore, adenine is 6 amino purine and guanine is 2 amino 6 oxo purine. Each commonly occurring pyrimidine and purines can be drawn in two tautomeric forms. Adenine and cytosine can exist as either amino or immunoforms and guanine, thymine, uracil. They can exist as either lactam or lactam forms. The two forms of each base exist equilibrium. 
but under the conditions found inside most cells, the amino and lactam tautomers are more suitable and therefore they predominate. The nitrogenous base is linked to position 1 on the pentose ring by a glycosidic bond from nitrogen 1 of pyrimidines or nitrogen 9 of purines. Third component that is phosphoric acid that has three reactive hydroxyl groups of which two are involved in forming sugar phosphate backbone of DNA. The nucleotides are linked together into a polynucleotide chain by a backbone consisting of an alternating series of sugar and phosphate residues. The five prime position of one pentose ring is connected to the three prime position of the next pentose ring via a phosphate group. So, sugar phosphate backbone is said to consist of five prime, three prime phosphodiester linkages. Their students, the co covalent backbones of nucleic acid consists of alternating phosphate and pentose residues and the characteristic bases may be regarded as side groups joined to the backbone at regular intervals. Dear students, it is noteworthy that DNA is hydrophilic. The hydroxyl groups of the sugar residues form hydrogen bonds with water. The phosphate groups in the planar backbone are completely ionized and negatively charged at pH 7. Thus, DNA is an acid. These negative charges are generally neutralized by ionic interactions with positive charges on proteins, metal ions and polyamines. All the phosphodiester linkages in DNA strands have the same orientation, giving each linear nucleic acid strand a specific polarity. The terminal nucleotide at one end of the chain has a free 5 prime group and the terminal nucleotide at the other end has free 3 prime group. It is conventional to write nucleic acid sequence in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction. That is from the 5 terminus at the left to the 3 prime terminus at the right. When DNA is broken into its constituent nucleotides, the cleavage may take place on either side of the phosphodiester bond. Depending on the circumstances, nucleotides have their phosphate group attached to either the 5 prime or the 3 prime position of the pentose. Therefore, the two types of nucleotides released from nucleic acids are nucleoside 3 prime monophosphates and nucleoside 5 prime monophosphates. It is sometimes useful to describe nucleic acid structure in terms of increase in levels of complexity like primary, secondary and tertiary. As far as the primary structure is concerned, it is, it is covalent structure and nucleotide sequence. Any regular stable structure taken up by some or all the nucleotides in a nucleic acid can be referred to as secondary structure. The complex folding of large chromosomes within the bacterial nucleotide and eukaryotic chromatin is generally considered tertiary structure. Dear students, the deoxyribonucleotides and their ability to form polynucleotides were discovered by Levine in 1931. But Levine postulated that the four deoxyribonucleotides occurred in a regularly repeated tetranucleotide sequence like adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Then again adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine and so on. However, chemical analysis of DNA of different species by Erwin Shargoff during 1940s clearly demonstrated that in all DNAs, regardless of the species, the number of adenine residues is equal to the number of thymine residues and the number of guanine residues is equal to the number of cytosine residues. From these relationships, it follows that the sum of purine residues equals the sum of pyrimidine residues. That is, sum of adenine and guanine equals to the th sum of thymine and cytosine. Therefore, in no case, the quantities of all the four bases were equal, which would be expected on the basis of Levine's assumption.
Dear student, the breakthrough in the history of science came with the discovery of physical structure of the DNA molecule by James Watson and Francis Crick. In 1953, they proposed the double helix model of DNA, which soon became universally accepted. Three notions converged in the construction of the three-dimensional model of DNA proposed by Watson and Crick. Number one, X-ray diffraction data carried out by Francis Wilkin showed that DNA has the form of a regular helix, making a complete turn after every 3.4 nanometer with a diameter of approximately 2 nanometer. The distance between adjacent nucleotides is 0.34 nanometer. So, there must be 10 nucleotides per turn. Number 2, the density of DNA suggested that the helix must contain two polynucleotide chains. The constant diameter of the helix predicted from the density can be explained if the bases in each chain face inward and are restricted, so that a purine is always opposite a pyrimidine, avoiding purine-purine or pyrimidine-pyrimidine partnership. Number third, irrespective of the actual amounts of each base, the proportion of guanine is always the same as the proportion of cytosine in DNA. And the proportion of adenine is always the same as that of thymine, which was carried out by Erwin Shergoff, I already discussed it. Thus, the composition of any DNA can be described by the proportion of its base, that is guanine plus cytosine, which ranges from 26 percent to 74 percent for different species. The double helix model proposed by Watson and Crick consists of two helical DNA chains coiled around the same axis to form a right-handed duplex. The hydrophilic backbone of alternating deoxyribose and negatively charged phosphate groups are on the outer side of the double helix facing the surrounding water. The purines and pyrimidine bases of both strands are stacked inside the double helix with their hydrophobic and nearly planar ring structures very close together and perpendicular to the long axis of the helix. The special relationship between these strands creates a major or larger groove and minor or smaller groove between the two strands. In the Watson Crick structure, the two strands of the helix are antiparallel. That is, they are 5 prime, 3 prime phosphodiester bonds run in opposite directions. Each base of one strand forms hydrogen bonds with the base of the other strand, forming a base pair. Only the lactam and amino tautomers of each base accommodate such hydrogen bonding. Guanine pairs with cytosine and adenine with thymine. These base pairs maximize hydrogen bonding between potential sites. Accordingly, guanine cytosine base pairs have three hydrogen bonds and adenine thymine base pairs have two. This feature of double stranded DNA accounts for Shergoff's earlier discovery that the ratio of adenine to thymine and guanine to cytosine is 1 is to 1 for a wide diversity of DNA molecules. Because adenine in one strand pairs with thymine in the other and guanine pairs with cytosine, the strands are complementary and can serve as a template for each other. During replication, the two strands of the DNA molecule uncoil and the unpaired bases in the single strand region of the two strands bind with their complementary bases present in the cytoplasm as nucleotides. These nucleotides become joined by phosphodiester linkages, generating complementary strands of the old ones. This provides for almost error-free high fidelity replication of the genetic material. To account for the periodicities observed in the X-ray diffraction pattern, Watson and Crick used molecular models to show that the vertically stacked bases inside the double helix would be 0.34 nanometer apart and that the secondary repeat distance of about 
3.4 nanometer could be accounted for by the presence of 10 nucleotide residues in each complete turn of the double helix. As already discussed, the DNA double helix of duplex is held together by two sets of forces. Number one, hydrogen bonding between complementary bases and base stacking interaction. The specificity that maintains a given base sequence in each DNA strand is contributed entirely by the hydrogen bonding between the base pairs. The base stacking interactions which are largely non-specific with respect to their identity of the stacked bases make the major contribution to the stability of the double helix. Under physiological conditions, double-stranded DNA is more stable than our separated DNA strands. Consequently, duplex DNA predominates in vivo. Sometimes, however, the structure of DNA can be disrupted as occurs during DNA replication and transcription. Complete unwinding of the duplex and separation of the complementary single strands is called denaturation. Denaturation occurs only in vitro. Double stranded DNA can be disrupted when solutions of DNA are heated above a certain temperature or when sufficient concentrations of cryotropic agents like urea are added. Dear students, deoxyribonucleic acid is a remarkably flexible molecule. Considerable rotation is possible around a number of bonds in the sugar phosphate backbone. DNA can assume different conformations under different physical conditions. The Watson Crick structure is also referred to as B form DNA. This form shows right hand coiling and contains 10.5 base pairs per pitch or turn instead of 10. The B form is the most stable structure for a random sequence DNA molecule under physiological conditions and is therefore the standard point of reference in any study of the properties of DNA. In the years that followed publication of the Watson Crick model for double helix DNA, X-ray crystallographic studies of various synthetic oligodeoxyribonucleotides of known sequences results in refinement to the structural dimensions. It is now known that DNA inside the cell does not exist in a pure B form conformation, but rather as a dynamic molecule whose exact conformation changes as the DNA strands bend in solution and is complexed to proteins. Dear students, the two most important alternative conformations are ADNA which occurs in dehydrated conditions and number two is our DNA which forms when certain sequences of base pairs are present. Certain nucleotide sequences fold up into left hand Z duplexes more readily than do others. Prominent examples are sequences in which pyrimidine alternates with purines, especially alternating cytosine and guanine or 5-methyl cytosine and guanine. A form DNA is also right handed duplex, but the rise per base pair is 0.23 nanometer and the number of base pairs per helical turn is 11. A DNA is more tightly wound than B DNA and the difference between the major and minor grooves are reduced. As far as the Z DNA is concerned, it is even more different from B DNA. There are no grooves and the helix shows left hand coiling. There are 12 base pairs per helical turn with the rise of 0.38 nanometer per base pair. In Z DNA, the sugar phosphate backbone follows a zigzagged path, giving it its name Z DNA. Dear students, I hope you might have understood the physical and chemical nature of DNA. Also, you might have understood the features that enable this micromolecule to transmit the genetic information from one generation to another. Thank you very much.